In this lesson, we'll take a closer look at one of the most important concepts in Divi, how sections, rows, and columns work together. Understanding these building blocks is key to creating clean, flexible layouts. Let's start with sections. Sections are the largest building blocks in Divi, and you can recognize them by their blue bar. Think of them as horizontal bands across your page. You'll usually begin by adding a section and then place rows and modules inside it. Sections are great for dividing your page into clear parts, like a hero banner at the top, a services section in the middle, or a footer at the bottom. Inside a section, we add rows. Rows are marked with a green bar and give your section structure. They define how content is divided horizontally. When you add a row, you can choose from predefined column layouts, such as one, two, or three columns. Rows help you align content and keep spacing consistent. Within rows, you'll find columns. Columns are where you place your modules. For example, in a three-column row, you might put text in the first column, an image in the second, and a button in the third. Columns make it easy to organize content side by side while still keeping everything responsive. If you want to change a row's layout later, you can do that easily. In the right settings panel, click Add New Column to insert another. Use the trash can icon to remove one, or choose Change Column Structure to switch to a different layout. Now let's look at the settings panel. In Divi 5, you don't need to click on a small gear icon anymore, as just click directly on the section, row, or column and the panel will appear on the right. Every section, row, and column shares the same three tab structure, content, design, and advanced. The content tab is where you control the basics. Here you can make the element a clickable link, which is useful if you want an entire section or row to point to another page. You can also add backgrounds, and whether that's a solid color, a gradient, an image, or even a video. This is also where you can enable the loop option if you're working with dynamic content, like blog posts or products. The Design tab is where most of your visual adjustments happen. This includes layout options like width and alignment, as well as dividers that let you add angled or curved edges between sections. You can control sizing and spacing, like padding and margins, to fine-tune positioning. You can also add borders, shadows, and filters for effects like blur or color adjustments. Transform tools let you rotate, scale, or skew elements, while the animation settings give you simple ways to fade, slide, or bounce content into view. The Advanced tab is for when you want more control. Here you can add custom CSS directly to the element, either in specific areas like main, before, or after. Conditions let you decide when or where an element shows up, such as only for logged-in users or on certain pages. Visibility options allow you to hide or show elements on different devices. You can also adjust transitions for smooth effects when styles change, and apply scroll effects like sticky positioning or parallax. These three tabs give you everything from simple design tweaks to advanced customization. And since the structure is consistent across sections, rows, and columns, once you learn it in one place, you'll know how to use it everywhere. We'll be putting many of these options into practice later in our project walkthrough. Everything you build in Divi comes down to this hierarchy. Sections at the top, rows inside sections, and columns inside rows, with modules placed inside the columns. You'll see modules marked with a dark gray bar, making it easy to distinguish them from rows and sections. As we move forward, we'll build on this concept. In the next lesson, we'll focus on modules, the actual content elements you'll use inside your rows and columns,